In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Once again, the Lord gather, gathers us at this sacred banquet. And we begin by asking for God's forgiveness and mercy. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us of our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to an everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, you manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy. Bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasure of heaven as we ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair, or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, is it because of the iniquity he committed 
that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins he has committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory, Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Having you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, 
even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. And he said in reply, I will not, but afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. And he said to reply, yes, sir, but did not go. Which one of the two did his father's will? And they answered, the first. And Jesus said to them, amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. And John came to you in the way of righteousness you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Like most of us, it's hard to avoid commentary about current events. It's hard not to hear people ask questions about what's going on in our world. One of the questions that I hear people ask is, with everything going on around me, and so many things going wrong, how does God's justice work? Another question I hear people ask is, I see things going on around me, and it seems like my rights are being eroded. Who's going to guard my rights? And the third question I hear people ask is, you know, Father, things aren't going well in my life. I'm not doing that well morally. And I wonder, is it ever too late to come back? Those are three very powerful questions. And all three of those questions are answered in the liturgy of the Word today. In the Old Testament, biblical people were struggling with how God's justice works. They knew and were taught that God rewards the good and punishes those who do evil. They believed that. 
But what they saw around them was that good people were suffering and people who do evil were prospering. And so they began to ask, well, then how does God's justice work? And the teachers of the Old Testament said, well, God's justice is definitive. It always works. But it may not work with this particular generation. It may be meted out in the next or the next. And so you might see a person who does evil prospering but their children will pay for it, or the next generation will pay for it. And so, from that response, people began to think, when they saw someone who was suffering, they went to that person and said, well, you're suffering, you must have done evil. And the response was, well, no, I didn't. It was my grandparents or my parents. That was the prevailing opinion until the prophet Ezekiel. And Ezekiel is in exile with the people. They're complaining. Why are we suffering? Because our ancestors did evil. And Ezekiel cuts through all of that and says, that's not true. Everyone is responsible for the deeds that they do and no one else's. And that was a powerful opening to the rest of the whole Bible. We can't blame anyone else. We can't blame grandparents or parents. You and I are responsible for what we do every day. Despite everything else that happens, we are responsible. What about our rights? Well, in the Gospel passage, we find two young men who had rights. They were the heirs. They had a right to the property. It was theirs. And their father asks them to do something. And one son says yes, and one son says no. The parable is teaching an incredibly important lesson. You have rights, but you also have responsibilities. This land will be yours, but your responsibility is to help now in its productivity. The parable is reminding us about the balance between rights and responsibilities. Too often, it's too easy to speak about my rights. The scriptures are challenging us. When are we going to begin to speak about my responsibilities? And finally, the parable speaks about personal responsibility it comes back to the lesson of Ezekiel. And in the parable, we are reminded that even if we are doing fine, if we slip, we're responsible and we'll pay the penalty. And even if we have not been doing very well for a while and we change our hearts, we see things very clearly, and we want to begin again, God says yes. If you have turned to me, even after all those things, I will open the doors and welcome you. Three incredibly important questions. And the scriptures of thousands of years ago are providing each one of us with challenging answers. Together, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence, we come before the Lord with our needs. For leaders of the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to sustain and inspire them in their ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected officials, that God's wisdom may guide them as they work for peace and justice in our cities and our nation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that e we may live each day striving to be faithful disciples through trusting in God's providence and showing love and compassion to all who enter our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they rejoice forever in the presence of God, the angels and the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the living and deceased members of Holy Sepulchre and St. Killian parishes, and for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we give you thanks for your presence in our lives. Help us to demonstrate our gratitude by the way we take responsibility for our actions as we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, who is the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all in his holy church. O merciful God, grant us that our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be placed open before us, as we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for though you have no need of our praise, our thanksgiving is itself your gift since our praise adds nothing to your greatness. It profits us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so with all the saints and angels, we proclaim your glory as with joy we exclaim. font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As a way of commercial message, I'd just like to remind parishioners and others that There are a lot of activities going on, perhaps in some different ways, but things are happening within our parishes. We would especially direct you to flock notes to sign up to receive information about activities that way, or to consult the websites of both parishes uh, online. Uh, There's a bulletin, there's lots of information. In particular, At this time of year, Catholic parishes begin what is called the RCIA, Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults. It's a process by which people who are not baptized become baptized in the Catholic Church. People who are baptized in other Christian faiths but want to become Catholics, and those who are baptized Catholics but have had absolutely no more formation after that are able to come to Easter sacraments. And so that is beginning. And we'd invite you to, to check the website or flock notes for more information. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.